Hey, it's RuPaul's Drag Race Vegas Review, Season 1, Episode 2, Opening Night. So this show kind of threw me for a loop because I assumed that um, we would follow like the two weeks leading up to Opening Night and that the last episode, I think it's a six episode arc. Um, I assume that that would start on Opening that the, the finale would be Opening Night. It's wrong. Second episode is... Is opening night. So we cut off. The girls are all going to go out. The six drag queens. And they're going to have a girls night at the, at the at the casino. They're out. They're having fun. Um, I imagine the casino encourages this. Because it gets guests excited about like. Oh our new Vegas review. And I know I would just go nuts if I was in. If I was at a casino. And I like saw some of the performers. I think that would just be like. Oh. Like even if I. I'm obviously already a fan, but I think like even if I wasn't um, a fan of something, that would get me to kind of be interested. So I get it. Nebraska goes, calls up Derek. Oh, I'm just done with my gig. I want to come over. And Derek's like, of course I want my girlfriend here, even though I'm in a thruple and I only, we're only seen one of the two. So it feels a little bit like Nebraska just wants screen time. Whatever. Not the worst sin. If I... My husband was on a reality show. I would probably show up too. So I get it. But from the show standpoint, not great. So she tells Naomi, uh, Nebraska wants to come. And Naomi, uh, Naomi's kind of like, okay, well, I thought we were having a girls' night. Shows up. And Asia's like, why are you here? And Nebraska's like, oh, I came to apologize. But not really apologize. And it's kind of like this, I'm sorry if you felt offended. I'd like us to get along. And Naomi's kind of like, I don't see what we need to get along. Like, we're not working together. Um, I, I don't have a problem working with Derek, but I don't work with you, so I don't see why we have an issue, which I think is very valid. Like, we don't have an issue. Well, I think we should get along. And then Derek's like, oh, did I hear my name in, like, the most contrived manner? I saw you guys gesturing at me. It's like, well, yeah, because that's the only reason Nebraska's here is because you're in the show. So let's not get all hoity-toity. Anyway, and it's like, I need you guys to get along. I know Nebraska just really cares about you. And I'm like, I I'm not interested in any of this. So anyway, everyone kind of says, this is kind of affecting the show. Like, it doesn't matter. This is hard enough with the six of us. We don't need to start adding in other people, which I totally get. And then the show, the next scene is Derek at home talking to her um, partners about her mom. Now, I had a hard time changing gears. We had this big confrontation in the in the casino. I know I'm supposed to be sympathetic to, to Derek about her mom stuff. Um, she hasn't talked to her mom in five years. It sounds really difficult, but I personally struggled to switch gears so quickly. I was sitting here being annoyed at Nebraska that that and, and why Derek is so set that everybody has to get along with Nebraska because Nebraska's part of our family. Well, that's great, but that it, I mean, it's it's a show. It's not like um, I don't know. It's just weird to me because it's like you don't. Ne, ne, I don't see why Nebraska. No one else's partner is like being dragged in, and specifically Derek's other partner is not being dragged in. So you can't even say, well, Derek's the only one who lives in Vegas, so that's the only reason it's an issue. You go. Her other partner seems to have no problem kind of finding his lane and not interfering. So I don't get that. But anyway, it's a sad scene. Derek talks about her family. I think a lot of us can relate to splits in our family, whether it's um, anything to do with the kind of thing that Derek's going through. But I personally, I'm just going to say I wasn't very sympathetic to this scene. It happens chronologically. The show, with the exception of the beginning has um is all chronological so it happened the next morning before opening night so you know unless they wanted to really move it that's where it is um i will say that i've seen derek now on all stars and their the season regular season it does seem that derek has a consistent problem with drama anyway um so we see we see everyone getting ready in the <clears throat> the room at the the st the stage room for their full dress rehearsal and Naomi and, and Asia are kind of butting heads and I am a hundred percent behind both of them honestly because I have been Asia someone pointed out something good on Twitter which is one of the things that really in the finale that screwed up Asia was remember that she tried to open and have these butterflies released and they were all dead and it was like just really threw her 
this is her learning from that. If she wasn't like over the top, everything needs to be checked and double checked and triple checked, then she's not she's not learning from her past experiences. So I totally get why she is so um, she wants to do a full rehearsal, no breakup. She wants the full experience so they can do a full run through, which they have not done yet, which I'm kind of like, you haven't done that yet. Anyway, um, so I, I think that that's a fair thing to do as someone who's high compliance on the disc which is one of the personality tests. I don't know if she's high compliance, but that was my first thought. High compliance, you want things to be right. It's, you know, people appreciate that when they go to the experience and they're like, everything was perfect. They appreciate that. But sometimes they don't appreciate the process that gets that to happen, which is to be bossy um, uh, a lot. I mean, you can tell these are things that I've been called. So I totally get Asia. On the other hand, Naomi's like, this is a lot. I'm trying to get ready. They're trying to do their paint. They're trying to paint their faces, do the whole thing. And she's like, Asia just needs to kind of tone it down was kind of my interpretation of it. I totally get Naomi. I have high anxiety. So when someone, when I'm in a place where I just need to like drown everything out, having someone having that experience near me would be really distracting. So I don't think either person is wrong in this. I think... This is a case of people People just need different things at different times. So I am there with both of them. Um, RuPaul does a check-in. Evie is uh, exhausted. Naomi brings up the back backstage drama. And then Derek's like, well, Asia kind of flipped out. I don't think anyone, I, think it, I know Asia didn't appreciate it because she said it. Asia's embarrassed by this whole thing being brought up. Derek's like, oh, well, I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to forget Naomi. And I'm like, this has nothing to do with you, so I don't know why you would be forgiving anyone. This is a, I, I don't really understand that. They do a funny little lip sync where RuPaul talks through Naomi's feelings. Don't worry, it's not, if you can hear my son, he's crying, but his father is with him, so he is fine. Uh, it's coming up on bedtime. So uh, they do the full dress rehearsal, lots of little flubs, lots of missed cues in the wrong place at the wrong time, the whole other thing. Um, Jamal and RuPaul, it looks like it's only the two of them, but then we get a cut and there's more people. So the next day, it's about 700 seats, totally sold out. People have come in a lot. This is actually the first time that the season 12 queens made a public appearance. So we got to see pictures of them and Naomi is late. And so they're all there, like, doing press and stuff, and she is not there. And that drives Evie nuts. So Naomi is starting to also look like she's got a little bit of some high, some problems. Anyway, um, another thing I wanted to bring up is that Asia's the host. So I think in some ways, because she's the host of the show, I think... I think there's more pressure on her. Like, so they come out, they, so we see it, they come out, they do all this lip sync and dancing, but then Asia is actually talking into a mic. And I think it's a little different level. I think everything else is, what I saw so far was lip synced. Um, and they finish, everything's great, there's awesome, they're gonna go to an after party. So I guess that's the next episode, is they're gonna go to this big after party. And then there's kind of drama. And so one of the things I like about the show is that, I'm like, I do love competition, but in competition, someone has to go home, and someone wins. And then there's feelings about that. There's feelings about this person didn't... Because there's always a threat of going home, you feel really invested in, like, f figuring out who's right and who's better and who's this. And so one of the things I kind of like about this is I don't have to. I can just kind of enjoy all of them at their own level. I can enjoy um, that camera's quiet. So I like Cameron. Um, I uh, watch The Work the World, which is on the WOW plus app, so I, which I recommend. Um, I will always like Cameron. I know Cameron doesn't talk a lot, but I've always liked it. Her and Asia are really good friends. Um, I love Vanjie, so I'm gonna, we, I didn't really mention Vanjie this episode. I love Vanjie. Vanjie is always at 10. We saw that in the very first episode. Vanjie's always at 10, but you know what's really nice? Vanjie not at 10. Like, Vanjie, you get to kind of know her. She's kind of quiet. She seems to get along with everyone, which I think we saw in her season. It wasn't... When we saw in her season, we saw her at these big moments. You know, they're editing, they're doing all that. In this this show, we see a lot of, like... Vanjie's not always at 10. You know, she's... you. I always wondered, like, what is it like to live around? She seems super chill. It looks like the, the cue for next week is that... 
they kind of push her to like get a hookup and she's like that's not what I'm looking for that's not what I want and it's I mean that's really sweet you know we see on the show we see a lot of hyper sexualized we see a lot of hookup culture we see a lot of raunchy humor we see a lot of everyone at 10 and always on and this is a really nice way to get to to see a lot of them talk about things like Evie talking about her health and calling her boyfriend that she met online um, uh, on, on Grinder was it and he's a law student and them talking about you know how she's feeling and it's nice to see Vanjie a little bit lower and you know and, and I'm not saying I don't like Vanjie when she's at 10 it's just that's not real in the sense of like um, if you listen to really good music there's ups and downs there's intense and there's low moments books have quiet moments and action scenes and that's what gives you a nuanced character so we're a chance to see more of a 300 and 60 degree view of a lot of these people that I've enjoyed and I, I, I like that quite a bit so anyway that is my review on episode two so see ya